Okay, what is up everybody? I am Evan Bacon, and today I'm going to be talking to you about video gaming in React Native. Uh, React Native gaming is kind of a fresh concept. It's kind of new, so a lot of what I might say might sound a little opinionated, so I'm sorry if I do. Uh, I'm always open to critiques and comments. You can email me directly. Uh, my email is kenwheeler at me.com. Uh, again, just as much as you want to send me, um, you know what to do. Like I said earlier, I'm Evan Bacon. Uh, I work at Expo. I work on our graphics libraries. Uh, I'm also full-time app developer. I make apps with Expo for Expo. Um, I got my job working at Expo by making just a bunch of random titles, and uh, I got a lot of really great feedback from the community and uh, kind of just stuck with it, and then Expo extended me an offer, and it's great. I love it. When I'm not coding, I am a professional Lego master builder. Um, if you look really closely here in the immediate foreground, you'll see uh, these Lego sculptures. I, uh, I made those. Uh, it kind of started when I was 12 as a way to like kind of cope with not having any friends or going outside. <laughs> and uh, then it just started getting like really popular, which is really strange for me. And uh, then like this video came out. Uh, which I'm gonna play a little bit of just because it helps people like understand just how strange I am. Um, yeah, just sat there for hours on end. It's crazy. Anyway, so that's why my Twitter handle is Bacon Bricks because it's Evan Bacon and Lego Bricks. So find me on Twitter and block me or something. So let's talk about gaming in Expo. Gaming and Expo, uh, it looks kind of like this. This is a game I made. It's called uh, Sunset Cyberspace. I'm going to play this real quick just so you guys can get a sense for what it looks like. Uh, this is on the App Store and the Play Store. I recommend downloading it just to get a sense for like what React Native games feel like, which is, you know, 60 frames a second, running hundreds of particles with like native composers at native resolution. Pretty incredible. So here in a second, you're going to see everything's going to be like flashing and it's get really psychedelic. And uh, you notice like no frame dropping, procedurally generated levels. It's uh, super cool. So it's just gonna start like pulsating colors and all that. We're gonna keep going until I hit a wall. This is like my best round ever. <laughs> and I did disable a lot of collisions, so. <laughs> Finally, we hit a wall. Um, ooh, thank you. It is a very good score. So this is all possible uh, from this library called XGL, which is part of Expo Kit. And what it does is it allows us to write uh, any kind of WebGL or take any existing WebGL and then bind it directly to OpenGLES uh, bindings, you know. And this was made in, uh, I think, like one day by this guy, Nikki, who works at Expo. His uh, Twitter handle is smikolesh. And uh, it has a lot of core contr uh, contributions from uh, Gray, who's around here somewhere. Um, but what this does is it enables us to use all of these incredible web frameworks. Uh, anyone who's familiar with like uh, game development on the web is probably familiar with some of these libraries. Then uh, we get to use these like almost just right out of the box. And uh, it's a really hot space right now. Like these are all on my to-do list. I haven't even had the time to try to add these, but I'm pretty sure a lot of them will just work as well. Things like Unity and Mapbox. So it's a lot of like really exciting stuff. Uh, the API it kind of looks like this. I'll walk you through it a little bit. Uh, on the web, you see we have like a Pixie application. This is very standard like web code. And down here, you see we initialize a GL view. We get this onCreate context method, and that context is a WebGL rendering context. Uh, and then we create an app the same way we would with Pixie. We pass it through there because we just do like uh, some stuff a little differently with the props. Or you could use like a universal component and just run it with complete parity across the web and native, which I think is pretty cool. This is one of the first graphics things I built. It's like a, a voxel terrain generator with like ambient occlusion, sky shaders, and it's running like, you know, smoother than Ken's biceps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, and then uh, when we implement like the universal components, we can run with complete parity, which is super dope. I tried to line these up and I couldn't, but you know, I'm sorry. 
so the thing about React Native, like the core principle behind React Native is that you can build full uh, real apps with it. And so it kind of goes without saying that like gaming should be the same way, like you should be able to build full real games with it. Uh, and so the way I've kind of tried to prove that is by creating some like full real games and cloning some really popular ones. So this is uh, Crossy Road, for those of you who don't know, it's just like a really popular iOS and Android game. And uh, it runs a little janky in this video, I'm not sure why, but the code is on GitHub so you can pull it down and check it out. It's super cool. I tweeted this out and a few hours after tweeting it, I got uh, a message from the creators. They messaged me personally telling me to uh, take it down. <laughs> with a lovely DMCA offer. Um, I didn't though, so it's up there and you can get it. I just sent them like, <laughs> I sent them like a dead link and I was like, there you go, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for them to see this video, it's gonna be great. <laughs> um, anyway, so after I learned my lesson from this, I created this next game, uh, Timberman. And this is just like a super popular 2D video game. You see it runs full 60 frames, all that, feels just like the, the actual game. Then I had like my own idea for once, I created this game Pillar Valley, this is on the App Store and Play Store, and it's just like a, a basic 2.5D game, but you see we're running like these full screen animations, everything is, you know, super smooth, we've got like Redux handling the score and everything. And then uh, I made this one just like yesterday, and this one's using the universal components, so I thought I might as well add it. And basically it's like cut the rope, but it's a little bit more modern, so I, I'm using like, uh, you know, it's still got all the rope physics, it's got this new like animation with like uh, React Navigation 2.0, and you can see how bad I am at cut the rope real quick by missing all of the stars. Um, and this isn't even like the first take, this is like take number five and this is the best I could do. And uh, yeah, I'm just really bad. <laughs> um, so coming from the web, there were uh, some like issues. You know, the when you make a web game, you can just say like, all right, when it's like time for the controls, you could just be like, okay, use the keyboard. But uh, any touch screen device, you have to be like a little bit more creative with how you control it. Uh, luckily, we have like so many uh, great APIs, things like device motion, uh, gesture handler, and then like even getting like granularity from force touch can give us like really solid controls. You see I've got this like Space Invaders thing and that's using device motion. Doodle Jump was using device motion. We can also create components, like I've got this joystick component here and you can see this super sweet API. Uh, but basically it's like the, the color dot, that's my finger, it's getting bigger with like force touch. And then I try to confuse it by using other fingers but because it's like native, uh, it can't get confused whereas on web, there's you know certain instances where it might get lost. But then it's just a component, right? Like we can just drop it in, wrap our game, and then things work. So like when I make a dope game, like this one that I'm working on, um, I'm able to just drop the joystick in and control the game. And over here you see I've got some buttons, those are just React Native buttons, and I'm delegating touches using Gesture Handler. So it's just a lot of like really advanced things that I'm able to implement just super simply. Um, so let's talk about some like not game related things. Uh, basically, I was looking at this game, this is called Catch Up by the company Catch App. And uh, this is like a blowout of all the screens in their app. And uh, only one of them is a game view. So if I was to build this in like Expo, I would only use one GL view. And uh, there's about 30 screens in this app, which is kind of why I think React Native is like a really dope platform for building games. Because uh, when 30 times more of the app is uh, view systems than game, it's like using something like React Native, which is an incredible view system, just gets you really great uh, distribution really quickly. So I'm able to like, like gaming UI. This is from a, a Smash Brothers clone I'm working on, which uses like people from the React community. So you got like Charlie Cheever here, and you got Ken Wheeler there. He's got this little drunk icon I made for him. It's really dope. Um, yeah. And uh, over here, you know, this is from that game Catch Up Again. I rebuilt the game over screen snack. I got the obligatory blowout view just to show how great the native view system is. But they've got like all these concepts running here. And a lot of these can be very difficult to implement in uh, a video game system. 
But if you think about them in the context of React Native, they're really very simple. A lot of this can be done with Redux or with something like Firebase or uh, Apollo. And uh, you can just kind of work these things out real quickly. And like, check out how awesomely I animated this using Animatable. It's like so slick. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so all these things would be like really tricky to do with something like Sprite Kit or Cocos. But because it's React Native, we just can do these like right out of the box and it's super simple. Um, there's also a lot of socially connected pieces of a video game that are like really important to add nowadays. Um, and a lot of times we get things like, you know, add Game Center or add like Google Play. But those can be tricky because then you have to stitch their features with uh, the backend system that you build. And their features don't really cover like, uh, like most of these. So you end up having to like create this really like hacky backend between the two systems. And I don't know if any of you ever tried like signing in to Firebase with like Facebook or something and then you have to like download all of their Facebook data and then synchronize it with Firebase and it's just like, it's just a pain. So all these things, all these concepts, you know, they can be tricky outside of React Native, but again, you can do all these in Firebase without even like scratching the surface. Things like anonymous authentication are really great. Over here, this is a screenshot from uh, uh, Nitro Roll. I use this component in a lot of my games. And basically, you can see it's using like people's iPhone names just because they haven't signed in yet. And it's like then after you've gotten engaged with the game, you can go and upgrade your account using like Facebook or Twitter. And that's just like one line with Firebase. It's really simple. Um, then, let's see. You know, uh, there's also like building licenses pages for your things. Uh, I don't have too much time to talk about this, but basically there's a great Medium article about this on the Expo blog. And it, what it does is it just crawls through your package JSON and creates pages like this without any effort at all. And they just look great and it makes your app feel like super professional. Um, and then Expo offers all these tools that help with distribution. And uh, because creating games in Expo or any apps in Expo is just like so easy, you end up with a lot of apps in the App Store. Uh, like right now I've got like nine apps pending and uh, that becomes like really hard to manage if I need to update anything. So, uh, you know, there's all these tools now that help me uh, manage having like ridiculously uh, copious amounts of apps just kind of going out all the time. Like using Deliver, for instance, I can uh, sync all my iTunes or Play Store data in uh, my Git repo. And Expo, as you know, just like the React community just has great channels for like promoting your content. So that's kind of all I'm going to say about that. Maybe we'll do some like more later. But uh, I'm going to talk about like augmented reality, specifically AR kit. It's just like a really hot topic whenever we go to like hackathons and stuff. People love using AR kit in Expo just because you can use AR kit with JavaScript. Um, you can also build AR kit apps with a Windows computer. You don't need to use a Mac. So the current features of AR kit in Expo are pretty limited. Uh, right now you get all of these and I've got a PR open that hopefully I can get done before the 25th and that will give us all of these features which are basically just all the features um, and this will allow you to build uh, like everything and it's super efficient too it's really great. Um, I've also uh, I've gone through and I've taken and just done all the math and I've put those in like separate functions so you seriously don't need to do like any trigonometry it's really great. Um, and then that lets you do stuff like this. Um, and as you might recognize, that's the floor from the, you know, this building because I seriously put my talk together like yesterday. Um, but as you can see, it's like 60 frames and it's super smooth and the API is really clean and easy to use. So uh, I'm also gonna talk about like kind of the other options for uh, building AR apps really quickly. Uh, I added this part because someone had told me that uh, apparently I'm really qualified to talk about seeing kit. Um, I know, I know, I don't know why either. So uh, I'm gonna discuss that real quick. Basically, uh, any 3D library uses these things called shaders. And uh, what a shader is, is um, like everything. Uh, everything that you see rendered to the screen is uh, using shaders. It allows you to use GPU to uh, you know, create this awesome effects. And so it's kind of like the base thing of any 3D engine. So if we were to Google like a uh, scene kit shader tutorial, these, uh, 
These first two videos are mine. This third one is also mine, but it's like someone put it on daily motion. I guess it's important. And then, uh, then there's the Apple developer docs, which are, you know, it just kind of restates the function name. Basically, what you see in the title is what you'll see in the, the, the link. And as you guys have probably already read, back in 2017, very obnoxiously, I wrote, uh, don't use SceneKit, use Expo. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of just like on all the big uh, SceneKit tutorials. And I was also 17 when I made these tutorials. And I didn't learn how to program it until I was like at least 18, so I'm not sure what is being said in these videos. Um, and it kind of just comes down to the fact that like uh, people who um, don't have like extensive 3D backgrounds can't really use it to like dynamically teach themselves and create uh, really interesting scene kit apps. A lot of the apps that we see are things that are like made in Blender or just these uh, really nice 3D models and then they're just kind of imported but there's not really a lot of effects and there's not a lot of things that are happening with the data that's being sent in and processed. So luckily we have Unity, right? And Unity is super awesome. It's, it's like incredible. I'm hoping that we can find a way to integrate Unity with Expo and try to get like that distribution and view system mixed with their uh, like ability to create games. Um, and again, remember I said I love it. Uh, it's like a 15 step process to get AR kit set up. I know people who like aren't programmers who have used it uh, successfully, so it's definitely like very usable. And then of course you need a Mac to, uh, to uh, make an iOS app with it. So if you have a Windows computer, which is a lot of people in the world, then it's like you can't really, uh, you know, do anything with it. Um, but just like extending ARKit with JavaScript allows us to do a lot of really specific things. And uh, I have I have a specific example of this. Um, and it's going to sound like a pretty insane rant, but basically, if you were to Google like AR kit, at this in America and here in France, uh, you get the same results, right? You get this Lego AR kit picture, and it's basically like a kid playing with Legos in the saddest way possible without any Legos there. <laughs> and um, uh, this image is like the most synonymous with AR kit, and uh, you know, in a way, like augmented reality, and. Um, Basically, if you want to load Legos into an app, you need to have support for this like file system called the LDRAW file system, and that is an extremely uh, ridiculous file system. It has like color mappings and brick mappings that are constantly being added and like updated by kind of third parties, and it's recursive and it has camera and instruction data. So, uh, as you can imagine, there isn't one of those for SceneKit, and I'm like fairly certain there's not one for Unity. Uh, I couldn't find one at least. Um, of course, though, as everyone in this room knows, there's everything for JavaScript, so uh, I was able to put this together in Expo, and it took like 30 minutes, and 29 of those were making this little Lego thing. This is Ruby from the anime Ruby, because I am watch anime a lot. <coughs> um, you're also able to like combine the view system with ARKit, so you're able to do dope things like this. Um, I think this is dope. I don't know. I showed my mom this. She told me she was really proud of me. So <laughs> I'm like showing you guys as well, hoping that, you know. Um, yeah, it's dope. It took me like an hour to put that video together. Uh, and then finally, there's AR Core. And with Expo and React Native, we like to have complete parity across frameworks. So we need to do all the same stuff with AR Core. Basically, the way frameworks work at Expo is we do things kind of based off of demand or if there's like companies that need these things. Um, I'm hoping maybe you guys could help me out with that demand. Maybe like, you know, do some of this, like help, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Where's the camera? I want to burn it for my boss. Like, yeah. Sweet. So now we can probably get that feature added. So let's talk about... Uh, just like how graphics have helped extend things in the React Native world, just kind of outside of gaming. Uh, specifically like components that have come out of the graphics work. So things like the filtered image component. Um, as you can see next to this beautiful gentleman, there is this API for a drop-in image component. And uh, basically what it lets you do is take any pixie filter and then use that to filter any image, whether it's like from the web or a static resource. Um, but specifically like images of Brent. And uh, the, the demo comes with like 60 filters just kind of built in. I don't know. It's odd that the, the framework that's used to make like Instagram and Facebook don't really have like built-in support for filtering images.
but we can use this, so that's great. There's also like sketching and signatures. Um, now sc signatures are kind of like really closely tied to commerce-based applications, so this is just like a great component to have. Um, again, the API is super clean, super simple. We're just like making a sketch. These are all like pixie things, and then it uses like all advanced Bezier curve math stuff uh, to make the lines cur uh, smooth. I don't know. I actually wrote it, even though it doesn't sound like I did. <laughs> um, and then we're able to use like really cool asset creation tools. So this is from that Smash Brothers clone I was working on. Um, as you can tell by the amazing tan and great like muscle structure, this is like my dad, Ken. Um, and these are some like animations that we're able to put together and use in our games. Um, yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we just have like lots of awesome tools that are exposed to us. Um, we're also able to do really cool things with VR and AR. So here I have like this virtual boy shader running like 60 frames over the live stream of the camera, running at full resolution, which is really cool. And again, like the focus for VR is mostly on like web VR type things, but because of the way Expo is set up and the way it works, we can use all that web VR code and then run it natively on the device. So I think it's pretty cool. There's uh, some like mixed support for certain things that work really well on Android phones, but then don't work uh, necessarily on iPhones. And that stuff we can kind of get like better parity when we import it into Expo. We also just have like really great file support uh, that comes with 3JS like by default. Um, and there's like really cool companies out there that are already using this. So there's like this company Ubiquity6 which scans things with AR kit and then they save like point cloud data. Basically they just create 3D scans of like everything in the world and then save it in the cloud. Um, but because there's all this like, you know, file support, you're able to just kind of do whatever you want. There's like motion capture file support, point cloud data. Uh, there's like this sign language company that reached out to us wanting to use uh, GLTF models because those are like really good for facial expressions. I didn't even know. Um, I have this, which is random and not really associated with anything, but I like the way the animations work. Uh, basically, you see like these voxel explosions and stuff running. Uh, Again, this is really like closely tied to just uh, model loading because we were able to load in whatever kind of model, like that was Magicka. We're able to work on things that are in Magicka and just live reload them. Um, this is bullet physics, which is arguably like one of the best physics engines ever. And it's been M scripted to uh, AMO.js. And we're able to run that M scription. And pardon, this video is like pretty choppy. I'm doing like AR kit and screen cap and then running all this like M scripted code on the main thread. Uh, I'm thinking like web workers would just fix all of this. I'm just like really lazy and haven't put those in there yet. But you see we get like really cool effects like the breakable effect and uh, we're able to you know just do uh, really interesting things without being very intelligent as you can tell. Uh, also we're able to do uh, I think like some of the more interesting things that have come out of React Native are these things where uh, people are using React Native views to build uh, more React Native views. So they're like building tools with it. It's an all like this recursive pattern and idea. And uh, we're able to kind of do that with gaming as well, where we can build games within the game. And it just kind of takes it like one step further and makes it like faster and more efficient. Then over here on the side, this is like one of those touch sculpture apps. And that's like very, very hard to build. Uh, I was able to put it together in like a few minutes because there's like a JavaScript library for it. So it's just like another thing which is made very easy by uh, JavaScript and being able to use it natively. And then finally, you got like these, uh, I don't really like this word, it feels weird, WYSIWYG editors. Uh, but basically because there's the full parity, we're able to build code in the browser and then run it on the phone and vice versa. Like for instance, uh, there's this thing called Snack, and for those of you who aren't familiar, it's kind of like code pen, but for native development. And uh, when I built the Crossy Road clone, I didn't really uh, build that like on the phone or with Expo at all. I built that in code pen, and then I just imported all the code because it's so far abstracted, and then it all just ran natively and worked. Um, and uh, really abruptly, I'd like to just stop and be done here, so. Thanks so much. You guys have been really great. Uh, that's all the time I have. Uh, 
Uh, got links for everything here, uh, except that last one, just report that Twitter account for, I don't know, copyright infringement. And uh, all the examples we've shown here, they're all on GitHub. And then the blog has like less insane versions of what I just told you um, that are more coherent. And uh, then everything else, you know, full game examples, and all be found on like GitHub and stuff. So much appreciated. Thank you.